Responsible employers believe in high standards of health and safety. But added to the pressure of deadlines or profit margins, health and safety measures can quite frankly feel like a millstone round your neck. There is no escaping the legal obligations. The Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 places legal duties upon all employers and employees and these duties were reinforced by the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 plus other regulations. It is quite clear what employers, directors and managers must do to take care of the health and safety of employees, customers and anyone who could be affected by the activities of a business or organization. There's no excuse for getting it wrong. And if it does go wrong, consider recent cases where companies faced civil or criminal action. Never mind the truth of what happened. People rarely remember that. What they have is the wrong image of your organization. Being hauled through the courts leaves a nasty taste in the mouths of the very people you depend on, your employees and your customers. Better not to end up in hospital and not to end up in court. In this video, as we look at your role and responsibilities as employer, director or senior manager, we invite you to take on health and safety as a challenge that demands the best of your management skills. The good news is that genuinely proactive, well-integrated and responsive health and safety management contributes to business success, avoiding problems, delays and extra costs. This video can't cover all areas of health and safety. It's a vast subject. We invite you to absorb key principles and apply them to your specific situation. If in doubt, consult your specialist health and safety advisor. The five practical areas of health and safety management covered in this video are safety policies and objectives, competence, risk assessment, planning and implementing safe systems of work, and monitoring measurement and review. This is your framework for a planned and proactive approach to risk reduction. The law requires a written safety policy for every organization employing five or more people. Your employees must know about this policy and each and every revision of it and you must be sure they know what the safety policy means for them. A safety policy is the starting point for your organization's commitment to safe working practices and risk reduction. It's also an essential part of self-regulation as set out in the 1974 Health and Safety at Work Act. Your organization's safety policy will be unique, tailored to your activities and environment. Typically, a safety policy has three key elements. A commitment statement, the definition of roles and responsibilities, and details of the health and safety arrangements for safe working. Your commitment is to safe working practices, to a safe and healthy environment, to reducing risk and to meeting legal obligations. The managing director or chief executive usually signs the commitment statement. Your commitment should include accepting responsibility for health and safety, managing workplace hazards, communicating the policy to employees, monitoring the policy's success, and your commitment should extend to the safety of everyone affected by your organization's activities. Secondly, definition of roles and responsibilities. The policy must define health and safety responsibilities for all tasks for all people in your organization. It is important to be absolutely clear who is responsible for what in all areas. If this seems a tall and rather detailed order, just imagine having to answer questions at an inquiry or in court. A director of the company or organization should be named as having overall responsibility for health and safety. 
Responsibilities for key personnel, such as production director, safety officer and others, must be clearly set out. Specify the role of safety representatives. Specify your staff consultation arrangements. The health and safety executive has given clear guidance on the health and safety roles and responsibilities of people directing an organization or business, including board members. HSE advises that your organization should accept formally and publicly the collective role to provide health and safety leadership, ensure that all board decisions accord with health and safety policy, actively encourage workforce involvement in improving health and safety performance and ensure a good flow of information about health and safety performance and risk management issues. The third key element of a safety policy is the specification of health and safety arrangements. This is often an outline a general statement referring people to procedure manuals which will detail safe systems of work. Examples would be procedures for health and safety training, first aid, procedures in the event of serious and imminent danger, dealing with hazardous substances, use of display screen equipment, environmental control and risk assessment arrangements. A word here about objectives for health and safety improvement. Just as in other areas of business performance, the objectives you set should be smart, you remember, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time-bound. Objectives can be broad in scope, relating, for example, to producing or updating the health and safety manual. And they can be specific and detailed, for example, relating to personal protective equipment. A thorough health and safety policy is an investment in avoiding trouble and avoiding huge costs. Your organization or business must be committed and be seen to be committed to learning from accidents, incidents and near misses. Your abiding aim is the continual improvement of health and safety management. The success of your organization or business depends on the competence of your people, including managers, to carry out their work safely and effectively. Now let's consider the areas of competence. The health and safety specialist, managers, operators, on-site competent persons, safety representatives. The health and safety specialist. All organizations should have access to a suitably qualified and experienced professional health and safety advisor who has an understanding of the hazards and demands particular to your activities or industry. In large organizations, the specialist might be a corporate resource. Or you might call in an independent advisor for technical advice and guidance. Managers must have the knowledge and skill to spot a harmful or potentially dangerous situation and they must deal with it, implementing suitable and sufficient preventative and protective actions for health and safety. Anything from reminding an employee to take breaks from display screen work to sounding the alarm and evacuating a building. This is the sharp end of health and safety. So they're well placed to contribute to documenting and implementing safe working procedures. Managers' health and safety experience is valuable in areas such as recruitment, training arrangements, and in that all-important monitoring and reviewing of health and safety performance. A thriving health and safety culture in your organization depends on senior level commitment and on staff attitude and competence. Your staff are the ones who have to make your safety policy happen day after day. You can only expect employees to do a good and safe job through effective induction, training in the workplace or perhaps externally, sometimes with qualifications, 
and when employees work to well-defined procedures. Competence can also be demonstrated through national vocational qualifications. Your staff should perform only the tasks for which they are properly trained and have the necessary skills. A valuable link between regulations and reality. Not necessarily an additional post, but rather, in many organizations, a suitably trained employee. What they do is to provide day-to-day -day support in addition to the health and safety specialist, helping their co-workers to carry out health and safety measures. What level of training is required? On-site competent persons needn't be formally qualified, but they must have enough knowledge and experience to undertake this work. They should be capable of applying what they know to a task, for example, setting safety objectives and keeping to them. They should be aware of when their own experience and knowledge reaches a limit and where to get help. Your nominated competent person or persons will be integral to health and safety in your organization. They are responsible for translating general regulations and requirements into specific controls, actually working out what people must and must not do. They are responsible for putting into daily use industry-specific best practice. They are responsible for liaising with health and safety specialists and for day-to-day -day proactive management of health and safety. Finally in this section, safety representatives and consultation. Two key pieces of legislation govern this area, <laughs> namely the Safety Representatives and Safety Committees Regulations 1977 and the Health and Safety Consultation with Employees Regulations 1996. Safety representatives may be appointed by a recognized trade union or elected directly by your workforce. Safety representatives will represent the employees in consultation with the employer. They will investigate hazards, complaints and problems. They will carry out inspections and make recommendations. They will receive information and feedback from employers and they'll attend safety committee meetings. Where no safety representative is appointed, the employer may consult directly with the workforce. Thorough consultation is helpful to all concerned and should cover proposed new workplace technology and safety measures, appointment of competent persons, health and safety information, and planning of health and safety training. Two things to note. The Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 require all employers to carry out a suitable and sufficient assessment of risks to everyone affected by their activities. And if you employ five or more people, you must record the significant findings of that assessment and you must identify those people who are particularly at risk. So, what is a risk assessment? First, let's define hazard and risk. A hazard is something with the potential to cause harm. It's always there, such as electricity or a hazardous chemical in its container. Risk is the likelihood of that harm actually being done. So a chemical might be extremely hazardous, but it's of low risk as long as it stays in its container. Risk increases when the chemical is used or moved. What a risk assessment does is to determine whether or not the control of hazards in your organization is good enough. Every risk assessment is a five-step process. You identify significant hazards in the workplace. You identify who might be harmed. You assess the adequacy of control measures by observing actual working practices and comparing them to what was intended and by talking with your staff. You record the results and you communicate the findings to those affected. 
Fairly obviously, whoever does your risk assessment needs a working knowledge of your industry or type of operation. They should also appreciate key statutory requirements as they affect the way your organization works. Your risk assessment record must detail significant hazards, those who may be affected, and existing control measures and their adequacy. And the risk assessment is just the first stage. It leads to a prioritized action plan for risk reduction through improvements in safe working practices, staff training, or wherever possible, removal of the hazard altogether. You must make all your employees aware of hazards in their work environment. And you must make sure they know and use safe working practices for minimizing risk. Whenever your products, services, or procedures change, or when there's a suspected health and safety problem, you need to revise your risk assessments. They are never a one-off exercise and should be reviewed regularly. The Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 require an organization to define and, where necessary, document work arrangements for planning, organizing, control, monitoring and review of health and safety measures. As directors or managers, you must ensure that safe working practices actually happen and that there is a system to monitor, measure, review and improve those practices. It takes clear standards to achieve safe systems of work and to reduce risk. These standards will be set in accordance with legal or good practice requirements by making sure your employees use the correct facilities and equipment and by measuring the achievement of these performance standards. In the new operating Planning safe systems of work is about defining and putting into place suitable and sufficient health and safety arrangements to achieve control of key hazards. Every organization, business and industry is different. You will need to define your own control measures. Keep in mind three broad areas. Firstly, process hazards, including use of work equipment, electricity, lifting and handling, and loan working. Secondly, health hazards, including risks from hazardous substances, noise, vibration, asbestos, and blood-borne viruses. Thirdly, procedures for serious and imminent danger, such as fire, toxic gas escape, landslip, or flooding. You and your organization could be judged on whether you had planned adequately to deal with all reasonably foreseeable hazards. So you're advised to document your control measures, which also supports clear standards and consistent training. To make sure that your risk assessments and your plans for safe systems of work are effective, you're advised to set up a monitoring system. Simple yet comprehensive inspections. Proactive monitoring to prevent problems occurring. Reactive monitoring to prevent problems reoccurring. To monitor accidents, ill health and incidents by confirming achievement of plans and compliance to standards. Your inspection program will cover all key areas of your operation. Plant, equipment and facilities plus checking compliance with performance standards. Inspections are part of your overall monitoring system concerned with legal compliance and achievement of safety objectives. How often inspections happen and specific items or processes for inspection will of course depend on the nature of the work. Monitoring provides information vital in promoting continuous improvement in health and safety. If there is an accident or ill health, effective investigation of accidents will be crucial. You must examine the accident scene and interview witnesses. You must determine the facts and sequence of events. 
you must identify the root cause of the accident where possible and make clear recommendations to prevent reoccurrence. For a full review of your organization's health and safety performance, an independent audit can be useful to measure performance. The trained outsider's eye can be swift to spot whether actual practice matches plans on paper and whether health and safety planning is in itself adequate. And when you put together the information you get from inspections and audits, you'll be well placed to review the adequacy of your safety policy, how well organized your workplace is for safety, including systems of work, and indeed, you'll see if your monitoring system itself is working as it should. This kind of review is up to those who manage and direct the organization or business. Health and safety that works from day to day must be practically managed to stay out of hospital and stay out of court. Successful health and safety doesn't happen by accident. The legal requirements are there, so you might as well seek out the opportunities that ride alongside the responsibilities. Not just the efficiency and cost saving that come from good health and safety, but confidence that yours is an organization that takes care of its people. And perhaps wider benefits, clearer communication, better understanding of different work roles. Taking care of your people and your property will undoubtedly cost you time and effort, possibly some money. Ultimately, good health and safety at work contributes to your success and profit. With commitment, planning and control, it is possible to make health and safety work for you. Thank you for listening.